The chemistry department welcomes you to Fresno City College. As part of your chemistry course, you will be performing hands-on experiments and learning activities in our state-of-the-art laboratory classrooms. The chemistry laboratory is an exciting learning environment, but also a potentially dangerous place. We handle caustic chemicals, flammable materials, open flames, and sharp glassware. Safety is of the utmost importance in any lab course and is everyone's responsibility. Laboratory safety starts before you even enter the lab with your chosen lab attire. Eating and drinking are not permitted in the laboratory classroom, so please leave all food and drink outside the classroom or safely secured in your backpack. Before arriving to class, you need to make sure you're wearing the proper clothing. Specifically, closed-toed shoes and long pants are required in the lab. These are especially important because although your lab instructor might have an extra pair of goggles, they won't have an extra pair of pants. Before you start handling chemicals or heat sources, it's important to remove any loose jewelry and tie long hair back. Long hair is prone to fall into chemicals or catch fire, while loose jewelry can catch on glassware and lead to spills. Other essential pieces of laboratory attire that may need to be purchased at the beginning of the semester are a lab coat and goggles. Goggles help protect your eyes, which are especially vulnerable to damage from caustic chemicals. Make sure to wear them over your eyes during the entire lab period. They don't do you any good on top of your head. Your lab coat will serve as the first layer of protection against spills. Make sure to keep your lab coat buttoned during the entire lab period. Make sure you're dressed properly for every lab period. If you do not have proper laboratory attire, you will be asked to leave and you will not be able to complete your experiment. It's smart to throw an extra pair of pants and shoes into your backpack or car, just to be safe. And your lab coat and goggles can be stored in the lab. The chemistry lab can be a dangerous place, but many of these dangers can be mitigated by proper laboratory attire. Now let's introduce you to the important safety features of your lab classroom. Before each experiment, all backpacks and chairs need to be cleared from the aisles of the lab benches. Your lab instructor will likely give a short pre-lab lecture before having students clear the aisles of chairs and backpacks. Please stack chairs three or four high maximum. For your safety, you want to assume all surfaces in the lab have been contaminated, so eating and drinking is never allowed in a laboratory. Surfaces can be contaminated with dangerous and toxic chemicals. While these chemicals might not be that bad for your skin, they can enter your system through eating or drinking, making them much more dangerous. If you want to take a drink of water during your lab period, please step outside to do so. Information on the chemicals being used, including the hazards associated with those chemicals, can be found listed in the Materials and Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. These can be found in a binder located at the back of each classroom. All waste generated in the lab should be disposed of in the proper waste container. Never dump anything down the drain unless your instructor says it's okay. Waste containers are located in the fume hood and will be marked with the particular type of waste. If you do not see a waste container, ask an instructor before disposing of your waste. Chemical reactions that utilize or produce volatile chemicals should be carried out in the fume hood. Minor injuries, such as cuts and scrapes, can be treated using the lab's first aid kit. This has all the basic materials needed to clean and dress minor wounds. Cleaning wounds is especially important because of the potential for chemical contamination. Chemists often use open flames from sources such as a Bunsen burner. Because of this, there is a risk of fire. In the event of a fire, taking action can prevent injury, so make note of the fire suppressive equipment around the lab. There is a fire blanket made out of sturdy fire resistant material. For larger fires, there is a fire extinguisher located in every lab. Dangerous and caustic chemicals are a reality of any chemistry laboratory because they are important in many chemical reactions. The most commonly used are strong acids and bases, which can damage your eyes and skin. If a spill does occur, regardless of severity, the first thing you want to do is immediately alert your instructor. They will give you guidance on to how to safely proceed. Minor spills, such as spilling a little acid or base on your hand, can be easily remedied by washing the affected area with lots of water. Spills on the benchtop or floor need to be neutralized with special chemicals before cleaning. For more severe spills, it may be necessary to wash off contaminants in the safety shower. This may seem extreme, but if a dangerous chemical seeps into your clothing, you cannot allow it to stand in contact with your skin or you'll risk injury. Such spills must be thoroughly rinsed immediately, which is what the shower accomplishes. It puts out a large amount of water, allowing your skin and your clothing to be cleared of all chemicals. Pull the handle and make sure all affected areas are thoroughly rinsed. Remove all affected clothing. Your instructor will clear the classroom. 
Again, this sounds extreme, but modesty is not as important as safety. For any chemical spill that splashes or otherwise gets into your eyes, the eye wash will be necessary. Press the pedal with your foot and hold your eyes open under direct wash for at least 15 minutes. This may be uncomfortable, but it's much better than damage to the eyes. Chemistry labs utilize open flames and dangerous chemicals in many experiments. Knowing the location of the safety equipment in your room is important to mitigate the danger associated with such risky materials. Please take note as your instructor points out the specific location of equipment in your particular lab space. The chemistry lab can be a dangerous place, so it's important to know your risks before entering. Before each experiment, you should familiarize yourself with the chemicals being used, especially the relevant safety concerns. All chemicals can be looked up in the Materials and Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. Chemicals are listed alphabetically by name. The hazmat diamond summarizes the safety of each chemical by rating its health hazard, flammability, and instability. The bottommost diamond is for additional safety considerations, such as if the substance is reactive with water. In addition to never eating or drinking in the lab, it is important that you never taste or smell the chemicals directly. While most people aren't tempted to taste the chemicals, there are several experiments where our sense of smell can be quite useful. It is important to never smell chemicals directly, but to instead waft the vapors towards your face with your hand. Some chemicals, especially those encountered in an organic chemistry lab, can give off vapors that are hazardous to our health. When working with such substances, it is important to use the fume hood. The fume hood applies a vacuum that draws up dangerous vapors away from the researcher. In order to ensure an adequate vacuum, the doors to the hood must be kept only slightly open. When working in a fume hood, only your arms should extend into the hood while you view your work through the glass window on the fume hood door. Never stick your head inside the fume hood or open the doors fully in order to view your work. The doors are there to protect you. The most common accident in a chemistry laboratory is broken glassware. While breaking glassware is an unfortunate fact of life in any chemistry lab, there are some important steps we can take to minimize its occurrence. Always place glassware at the center of your bench space when not in use, instead of at the edge of the bench where it can be easily knocked off. For more thin and delicate instruments, do not apply an excessive amount of force. If something feels stuck, ask your instructor for help rather than applying more force. In the event you do accidentally break glassware, let your instructor know immediately. A common accident in the lab is cuts from broken glassware. Sometimes, when a student breaks a piece of glassware, they get a little embarrassed and try to pick it up quickly with their hands. It's important never to clean up broken glassware with your hands. Always use a dustpan and hand broom, even for the large pieces. As an additional precaution, wipe down the surface with a damp paper towel to remove any small shards of glass that may be hard to see. All broken glassware needs to be placed in the broken glassware container, not in the regular trash where it can pose a hazard to the custodial staff. Importantly, no other trash should be placed in the broken glassware container. In the event that you do cut yourself, it is important to clean the wound sufficiently. This is especially important as we are in a chemistry lab, and the glassware may be contaminated by dangerous chemicals. Rinse the area thoroughly with soap and water. Your instructor will provide you with a basic first aid kit containing bandages and antibiotic ointment. One of the most exciting and dangerous parts of any chemistry experiment is the handling of the chemicals used in the experiment. The most common way of measuring the amount of solid substances is using the mass balance. Place your weigh paper on the balance and then press the tear button. The balance will now read zero because the tear button allows the balance to account for the mass of the paper. Remove the paper from the balance, transfer your solid to the center of the paper using a scupula, then place back onto the balance and record the mass. Close all balance doors to get the most accurate reading. Never attempt to perform a transfer inside the balance as you're likely to spill. Balances are extremely expensive, and these spills decrease the lifespan of a balance. The bottles of given chemicals provided by the Fresno City College stockroom are referred to as stock bottles. You can take material out of a stock bottle, 
but never return anything back to the stock bottle. You run the risk of contaminating the entire bottle. If you accidentally remove too much, simply transfer the excess to another piece of weigh paper. You can give your excess to a friend in need or dispose of in the proper waste container. Liquid chemicals and solutions are also commonly used in a chemistry laboratory. There are a variety of instruments used for measuring the volume of liquids that you will utilize in your lab. A graduated cylinder is commonly used to measure the volume of liquids. When transferring a liquid from the stock bottle, always hold the stock bottle by covering the label. This will prevent any spills from soaking into or smearing the writing on the label. And just like solids, if you accidentally retrieve too much of a liquid from the stock bottle, you need to discard of the excess into a beaker or other vessel. Never return excess materials back to the stock bottle. Always label your glassware with its contents using label tape and a Sharpie. A pipette is a commonly used instrument to transfer liquids. Never place the pipette directly into the stock bottle. First transfer the liquid to another vessel, like a beaker, and draw from there. You will be introduced to a variety of glassware throughout the semester, and an important thing to keep in mind for all of them is to never try to pour from an unsafe position. Always consider the surface below before transferring liquids. It should be free of all material, including your lab notebook. Spilling a corrosive substance on your lab notebook will result in lost work and may even result in having to throw away the notebook. Also, consider your body position when pouring. Do not stand on your tippy toes or excessively reach while pouring. Bring the glassware closer to you so you can pour in a more comfortable, safe position. If you need the help of a lab mate or your instructor, just ask. Your instructor will always be happy to demonstrate the safest technique. Spills can and will occur in any chemistry laboratory. As with any accident that occurs in the lab, the first thing you need to do is inform your instructor. Some spills can simply be cleaned up with a paper towel and water, just like you would at home. Other spills are more serious and require special attention. The most common examples of these are acid and base spills. An acid spill first needs to be neutralized with sodium bicarbonate. The neutralized waste is then swept into the trash and the area wiped clean with a wet paper towel. A base spill is handled in a similar fashion, but neutralized first with citric acid instead of sodium bicarbonate. Although you might feel a little embarrassed after spilling a solution or breaking glassware, rest assured that all of your instructors still spill on occasion and have broken more glassware than you'll handle this entire semester. Another special consideration when handling acids and bases are when performing a dilution or mixing an acid or base with water. It's important to remember the phrase, add acid to water, not water to acid. When water is added to acid, the heat generated can be so large that it causes the water to boil instantaneously, leading to uncontrollable splattering of the acidic mixture. Heat is commonly utilized in a chemistry lab in a variety of ways, including catalyzing chemical reactions, isolating compounds, and purifying reaction products. Let's explore the safety hazards of the different heat sources used in a chemistry lab. A hot plate is a common method for providing heat to the various glassware vessels used in a chemistry lab. It works a lot like a stove. There is a knob that increases the temperature of the surface plate. Many hot plates also have a built-in magnetic stirring feature as well. The temperature readings correspond to the surface of the plate. Your sample will generally be much cooler than this surface temperature. The plate surface can get very hot, like ridiculously hot. For most experiments, you will never need to set your hot plate higher than half of its maximum value. Do not ever crank it to the maximum power. This can cause decomposition of your sample broken glassware, or even fires. Ask your instructor if you're unsure what to set your hot plate to. A Bunsen burner is another common method for delivering heat to a sample in a chemistry lab. There is a knob on the bottom that adjusts the fuel flow, and twisting the column adjusts the airflow. 
your instructor will demonstrate how to adjust these settings to obtain the optimal blue cone flame. Because of the open flame of a Bunsen burner, it poses a serious fire risk, so make note of where the fire extinguisher and fire blanket are in your laboratory classroom. When operating a Bunsen burner, always remember, Bunsen burners need babysitters. That is, you never walk away from a Bunsen burner when it's on. You need to watch your Bunsen burner at all times during its operation. If an accident with your Bunsen burner does occur, for example, gets knocked over onto its side, the first step is to always make sure to get yourself out of harm's way. Then, if possible, turn off the gas source to the burner to extinguish the flame. In case of emergency, there is a main gas shutoff valve located under the sink at the end of each bench. In case of a serious fire accident, it might be necessary to employ the fire extinguisher. To operate a fire extinguisher, pull the pin from the handle, point the nozzle towards the base of the fire, and squeeze the trigger. The dry chemical foam inside the fire extinguisher does cause a bit of a mess, but will safely extinguish the fire. For less serious fires, it may be more appropriate to use the fire blanket to smother the fire. Simply unfold the thick blanket and throw it over the fire. This will rob it of oxygen, safely smothering it. If your clothing or hair were to catch fire, stop, drop, and roll to put it out immediately. At the end of each laboratory experiment, you will need to clean up your station. Start by disposing of all your chemical waste into the proper waste container. Never dispose of anything down the drain unless directed to do so by the instructor. Waste containers are routinely located in the corner fume hood. If you do not see a waste container, ask your instructor. Do not assume that means it is safe to dispose of down the drain. You will then need to wash all glassware you used in the experiment. All glassware must be washed even if it looks clean to the eye. Glassware can be cleaned of most chemical residue simply by rinsing thoroughly with DI water. Fill the glassware with some DI water, swirl, and then dispose of down the drain. Repeat this process three more times to ensure thoroughly clean glassware. Thinner pieces of glassware, like pipettes and burettes, may require a little more patience when cleaning. You can use a wash bottle to help you rinse glassware that does not fit comfortably in the sink. Remember, the goal is to thoroughly rinse all glassware surfaces with plenty of water before returning the glassware to storage. Once your glassware is cleaned, it can be returned to its proper storage location in the lab. It might take you a few experiments to learn where everything is in the lab, but you'll quickly become acquainted with your classroom. If you are unsure of where anything goes, simply ask your instructor. Once your workspace has been cleaned, spray it with surface cleaner and wipe dry. This will ensure your area is safe for the next student. Importantly, surface cleaner is not a substitute for a proper spill cleanup. If you have spilled any dangerous or corrosive chemicals, such as acids or bases, these will need to be properly cleaned before wiping down your surface. Finally, return the chairs to their previous locations. Make sure any used drawers are closed and locked before you leave.